Welcome to Outmotorsports, the channel for cars as you are. My name is Jake and I'm here with the 2022 Ram 1500 Laramie GT. I'm excited to drive this because as you can see, we are towing my enclosed trailer and I was excited to drive the e-torque version of the 5.7 liter Hemi V8. The e-torque motor is an exciting little upgrade that Ram made a few years ago and I've never gotten to drive it, especially with a trailer hooked up. But Ram sent this special version of this truck that is the GT package and that adds some performance options, some really cool stuff. So I wanna talk about all of that as well. All right, so first of all, how does e-torque work? What is e-torque? Well, let's pop the hood and talk about it. So this version of e-torque has the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 as its base, and it's basically got this setup right here. You can see it with this gigantic belt. Uh, this is basically replacing the alternator on this truck. So it's kind of a, a motor generator sort of deal and it can add up to 140 pound-feet of torque on its own, but it's one of those things where it kind of shoves the rest of the engine into the power band. It does not add all that torque where you just add it to the figure that Ram claims for this 5.7 liter V8. So it is still rated at 395 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque, but this uh, starter generator motor sort of deal is powered by a small battery behind the back seat, and it is going to be used to give you better auto start stop capability, uh, give you a little bit of regen braking and improve your fuel economy by two miles per gallon combined. So this is rated 19 miles per gallon combined versus a regular 5.7 Hemi. And uh, it also helps a little bit with just kind of shoving in the torque band and in theory, helping out with a little bit more boost when you are towing. Now you'll notice this Ram Airflow uh, moniker up here on this plastic cover. That is part of this GT package going on here, which is a $3,000 option, but it makes the truck look very, very cool. And it's not just for looks, it is for performance as well. So this Ram Airflow going on is a factory Mopar cold air intake that you get as part of this package. Uh, and then you also get a few other things. So let's take a little bit of a tour around the truck. Go ahead and shut this. Now this truck also has the uh, night edition package, which gives you these black accents, the black grill. You get this sport performance hood with some uh, air vents. I don't believe these are functional, but they sure look nice. Um, you get these 22 inch wheels. This is again, part of the night edition package. These are 22 by nine inch aluminum wheels, which are pretty nice looking to me. They kind of vaguely look like Viper wheels. If we move around, this truck does have the optional four corner air suspension. You can see the airbags right in there. You get these nice side steps. And then moving to the rear of the truck, we've got two interesting things here. You've got a cold side upgraded exhaust, which is just to say part of the exhaust is upgraded more on this, uh, on this back half here, but it's a performance Mopar exhaust. And then that differential back there is a limited slip differential. That is part of the night edition. However, the GT package gives you 3.92 to one axle gearing. So you kind of get both going on between the two packages. So this is really the highest performance truck you're gonna get short of the TRX. Uh, and then you've also got some really nice options here for the sake of towing. Now with towing, obviously right here, we've got all of our connections with your seven pin wiring. Um, and then I've just got a regular hitch going on. I don't have weight distribution set up today because it doesn't really need it. Uh, we're not pushing the limits of this truck uh, or its payload, but this is rated for a little over 11,000 pounds of towing. And that's gonna be the same for all of these with the 5.7 with e-torque and the engine, just adding the 5.7 e-torque is a $2,795 option versus the base Pentastar. The only other thing we want to talk about here is payload. And Ram says that these are rated for up to about 1800 pounds of payload, but we need to take a look because that is always different based on each vehicle. So if we take a look right here, uh, this one is only rated for 1,290 pounds of payload. So that's because this is a fairly well-equipped Laramie level two with a bunch of options. You've got uh, the big panoramic sunroof that adds some weight. Uh, you've got other options that add weight. As far as other things you get with the GT, you do get these nice seats uh, that have the GT logo. They're kind of nice and aggressively bolstered here, really like that. Uh, the other things you get with the GT package, uh, kind of interesting, you get the regular console shifter here, which you get in the Ram TRX. Uh, it replaces the dial shifter that you would get up here instead. So 
you get this, and then you also get the shift paddles off of the TRX as well. So these are nice big shift paddles. This is kind of the, you know, the sport truck, if you will. But if you look at these, they are, they have cutouts because you've got your typical Mopar uh, sound controls. This side is for track, the other side is for volume. So you've got these cutouts. So you have to either click it up here or down here. You can't grab right in the middle where you might want to. All right, so with all that, let's start this Ram up and talk about how it is to tow with the 5.7 liter Hemi with eTorque. Now I've owned a Ram with the 5.7 liter Hemi. It did not have eTorque, it was a 2016. However, uh, I really liked that drivetrain. I just wished it had a little more boost to help you away from a stoplight or something. Now, <laughs> you can hear that Hemi working. Uh, we're pushing a 5,000 RPM here to get up to 60 miles an hour and upshifts, there we go. Uh, so what's the deal with eTorque? How does it feel towing? Uh, why do I like or not like uh, towing with a 5.7? So the eTorque adds up to 140 pound feet, like I mentioned, uh, it, through this belt driven system. Um, it's not like a turbo. Um, I really, you know, the, the my favorite half ton drivetrain for towing a trailer is Ford's 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 because it is just so unbothered by being asked to tow however much weight you're pulling. Um, it, it doesn't ever feel like it's really working very hard. This is not necessarily that, although I do think the e-torque is helping. The truck is a little more reluctant to downshift, like in a good way, not no, we're out of power. It just, it, it, you can tell it's got a little more torque than it otherwise might, and it is helpful. Uh, that said, Ram does not rate these trucks at making any more horsepower or torque compared to their regular 5.7 Hemi siblings. So that 140 pound feet is really just kind of a bonus that you get here and there. It's not something that gets added up to the truck's total output. And that just shows in where it makes its power and torque. So peak power is made at like 5,600 RPM. Peak torque is made somewhere around the 3,000 RPM, 3,500 RPM range. So you do have to still work this much more than a turbo engine, despite having that e-torque on hand. Now, that bit of acceleration back there where it was revving and revving, you know, that was getting away from a stoplight. As far as maintaining speed, you know, up these little hills that we're doing right now, that's kind of no big deal. And that's where it's holding a higher gear longer. So that feels much more relaxed. So it's not constantly shifting. That's the nice part. So, uh, you know, from my perspective, I would absolutely prefer the e-torque all things equal over a regular 5.7 because it does feel just a little less frantic. Uh, the transmission in here is that same, you know, ZF Chrysler 8 speed that is fantastic. I think it's the right amount of ratios. It's, it's the right spacing of gearing. Um, and this truck being the GT, this has the standard 3.92 axle gearing. So that also makes this the most sprightly. Ram does it in the GT for the sake of just acceleration because this is, I guess, a race truck. But uh, either way, having 392s versus the lower axle gearing, I think your other options are a 321 and a 355. Uh, the 392s really help for the sake of just helping your acceleration overall. So that, again, is really nice. Now, as we come up on a red light here, uh, braking is kind of a non-event. You've got a built-in trailer brake controller here with that trailer tow package. Um, the package really gets you the trailer brake controller, which is right here, easy to use. Um, you've got the, the slider for your emergency braking and your, your controls here, and it's all displayed in the screen uh, by your gauges. You've also got this trailer steering assist for the sake of, of backing up a trailer. Um, this is kind of a, I don't want to call it a copycat system, but Ford did this first with their pro trailer backup assist. Um, I don't care for these systems. I, I find them irritating because I know how to back up trailer. Uh, I've been towing for a while and this is now something that will break my brain versus just backing up a trailer and, and steering however I want to. Steering with a trailer, handling with a trailer, um, all of that is, this is all fine. Uh, nothing to be concerned about. The wheelbase on this truck is plenty long. It's 144 inches long. And uh, that is plenty of wheelbase. This is a crew cab short bed. So five foot seven inch uh, truck box going on. Um, now, as far as a few other sort of tow tech things going on, my, my favorite, most impressive piece with with the Ram trucks is their trailer blind spot monitoring system. So 
Uh, this is something that they added a couple years ago. It works very well and you don't have to input the dimensions of your trailer. It will just figure it out. So I plugged this trailer in and at first it just showed a trailer icon and it said auto and I drove it about five feet. And then now it shows in my cluster a trailer icon and it says 30 feet. Is that accurate? It's accurate within three feet, uh, which is all that matters. Um, the My trailer is 27 feet from, from hitch to taillights and having a 30 foot buffer behind the truck is exactly what I need to make sure I don't go changing lanes into somebody. The maximum length you can have this work at is 38 feet of trailer, which honestly, if you're pulling a 38 foot trailer with one of these, you probably want a bigger truck. Uh, I think this is a fine trailer. You could probably go a few feet longer, but I don't know if I would go <laughs> 38 feet with a half ton truck uh, platform. Now, as far as where this 5.7 with e-torque fits in the Ram truck lineup of engines, uh, here's the thing. Jeep, who is a another Stellantis brand, uh, Jeep has announced that they are not going to build the Grand Cherokee two row with the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 anymore. And I bring that up because there are two variants of the same new engine that have come out that are in the Grand Wagoneer, which is the big Ram 1500 based Jeep, not Jeep SUV. So those are going to be twin turbocharged inline six cylinders that are nicknamed Hurricane. And they make more power and torque than the, uh, the V8s did or do. And they're in the Grand Wagoneer, which is more or less a Ram 1500 with a bed cap and some different styling. It's not just that, please, Stellantis, don't, don't get mad at me for that. But uh, point being, the Hurricane is in that truck, so it only makes sense that the Hurricane will be coming to this truck whenever that time comes. Uh, there's been no announcements, but that's going to give you that really silky smooth inline six power. It's going to give you two turbochargers, and it's gonna give you another 100 something pound feet of torque on top of what this Hemi with e-torque can provide and it can do it consistently. So, do I think the Hemi with e-torque is very good? Yes, I really am enjoying towing with it. However, I am also very excited for the Hurricane to come out and see how that'll feel pulling the same trailer. Now. The great news is if you're looking right now to go shopping and you don't necessarily care about a pickup truck versus a big SUV, I will have a video towing this trailer with a Grand Wagoneer with that Hurricane high output in line six. So you can compare, I will compare, we'll talk about it in the next video. But I do think the 5.7 e-torque is probably the best drivetrain you can get for towing right now in a Ram 1500. Uh, the regular Hemi, is fine, it just feels a touch more lethargic, uh, and it, it's not really a lethargic engine, it just has to work a little harder. Uh, but that's your option. There is the Eco Diesel, which I have enjoyed previously in a different Ram 1500, but uh, there's been some, some issues with reliability on those from owner reports uh, here and there, and it's a ton of torque and not a ton of horsepower, so pulling out to pass is not the easiest thing in the world to do. And then they do have that Pentastar V6, which is put into service in all sorts of vehicles, uh, including the Ram Promasters that you see as uh, USPS mail delivery vans sometimes. Uh, it's fine, but would I want to pull you know, so much weight with it? No, and they're not ready to pull that much anyway. All right, that is it for this review of the 2022 Ram 1500 Laramie GT with eTorque. Thank you so much for coming along. As always, please be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe right here on YouTube. Give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at OutMotorsports. And if you'd like to join a community of fellow LGBT automotive enthusiasts and motorsports competitors, head over to OutMotorsports.com. We've got a whole community over there, and we would love to get to know you. Till next time, please stay safe, be well. We'll see you again soon.